This is James Com, the guy on the bike, welcoming you all to another half ass production. Today we're coming to you from. Hey, and there's the man himself right there, Thornton Willis. We're coming to you from uh, Sideshow Gallery here on Bedford Avenue. 319 Bedford Avenue. 319 Bedford Avenue. And we're going to visit a wonderful show of paintings, 40 years of paintings by this gentleman right here, Thornton Willis. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to come back and talk to you, Thornton. Okay. But. Uh, I've already run, gone in and run through there, and everybody okay, buddy, is. Uh, I appreciate your coming. Well, everybody is very impressed, and uh, this is quite a uh, quite a body of work you got in there. Thanks. You got some stuff in there I haven't seen before. I love the. Uh, yeah, you, you didn't see those earlier paintings. What do you call them? The, the floor slats, painting, the, the slat slats. paintings. Yeah, the slats. They're beautiful. I made those down on the floor. Back in the late '60s. On, yeah. All done in one shot. You know, like 14, 15 hour period with no breaks. Just drinking coffee or drinking a lot of coffee, eating a lot of. Uh, what do they call it? Ass? Yeah. Sounds like fun. Guys, I'm going to be back. <laughs> Thanks, Darden. That was Jordan Wills. We're going to take a little run through and look at his paintings here. We're here at the opening. It's very loud, very crowded. This painting is titled Black Wall. On canvas, 121 by 142 inches. This is one of Thornton's paintings from 1969. This is Gerald Jackson. This piece is Red Wall. 110 by 111 inches. It's also 1968, 1969. I was just uh, talking with David Cap about how extraordinary these paintings are. Considering they're about geez, 40 years old at this point, they still look pretty fresh. Big in 1984, 84 by 72 inches. This is a pretty good example of some of the <coughs> very uh, spare compositional designs that Thornton got a lot of attention for, particularly for these wedges. I was talking to someone today that said that Thornton would be kind of classified as a color field painter. But due to the composition, I think that these are also in the category of the New York Imagists. This is the back gallery. some paintings in here that are a little more recent. And this might be the newest piece right here. Bisbee, 1977, 103 by 84 inches. This was his wedge series. actually been reading the uh, biography of Mark Rothko and uh, I was kind of thinking about Rothko's rectangles and his overpainting and layering of colors and I think that Thornton has uh, sort of taken that to a, to a richer extent but he does have a very wonderful and subtle color sense on these Coyote, 
6,084 by 60 inches. This is a good example of Gordon's more recent work. You know, when he decided to break out of doing the single wedge image and uh, sort of fractured it and turned them into more more diamond and triangle forms, a lot of fellow artists and critics and dealers said that he was making a mistake that he should have gotten his signature image, the wedge, and he should have stayed with that and, and painted that for the next 40 years, but Thornton is a stubborn guy, he decided he had to move on. Jacob's Ladder from 1980, 180 by 78 inches, I think this one is a, really gives you a good chance to experience the kind of subtle color changes he was using here in the overpainting and building up a very simple but bold image using huge planes of color. Blue Twister, 1985, 60 by 48. As Thornton was working his way out of the wedges, he sort of went through a lot of transmogrifications, came up with a lot of different variations on that form. But I think this one here also, not only is it a striking form, but the color contrast really make that pop graphically. This is titled Space Out, or Space Out. 88 by 76, 2006. Cross pin, 2007, 50 by 40 inches. We've got a couple of his works on paper. These both also look fairly recent. Okay, we're back. We're talking with Thornton Willis here. The show is fabulous. The painting's great. I do have a question for you. You know, you've been in the you've been in the New York art scene for quite a while and working as a painter. What do you think the biggest changes these days are and the biggest challenges for uh, young painters that are sort of coming in and wanting to be part of the uh, the painting scene in New York? has been, I guess, is finding opportunities to, you know, show the work once you get it to some place where you want to do that. I, I think that's part of making art is ultimately is, you know, getting seeing, it, to help. seeing it shown. And getting that to happen is not easy. It is, becomes more difficult, probably, as time goes on. If you're worried about what somebody is going to say about you in terms of, you know, putting your work in, in some particular place, and especially if it's, you know, the press, then you can't really be concerned about that. You just got to make your work and be as real about it as you can be. I, I, I think I came to New York to make paintings, to be, you know, stimulated by the environment. I didn't, I, I didn't come here because this is where people wrote about it. That's a good point, Jordan. Thanks a lot, and the show show is beautiful. But I did come here because there are a lot of good gals. That helps. Yeah. Thank you, Thornton. My pleasure. Well, for New York painters, I think this is quite a uh, an auspicious occasion. It's rare that you have a chance to actually see the arc of a career like this. James Calm reporting on Thornton Willis. Painting 40 years at Richard T. Imperio's Sideshow Gallery, 319 Bedford Avenue, right in the heart of Williamsburg.